So can you just, uh, and how is that pastocyte photo? That is uh, without your beard, without moustache, clean shave? Without beard, without, uh, yeah, without beard, um, uh, clean shave and uh, you have to dress neatly. Okay. Can you just show me very close to the screen? If you have right now with you? No, ma'am, I didn't take it, uh, took it at that cost, which is fine. I'm sorry? No, I'm saying that I didn't took it uh, that pass for it. Achha, you haven't done it. You haven't yeah, done yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. It's better that you uh, see today is the last day for the training, and uh, it's better that you keep your passport size photograph or your uh, you know, it's, uh, the full size photograph in case if you yeah. are really uh, you know, uh, looking forward to apply as a cabin crew in any airline and the vacancies are out. Uh, if you visit different airlines in India, the vacancies are out, uh, you can go. May I know your age? 21, ma'am. 21, okay. Then you are even uh, eligible for the international as well. However, you need okay. to. Yes. Um, so today let's uh, do some interview questions. Interview questions we will discuss uh, as, uh, uh, you know, uh, the interview questions which I have put here is just a general as, uh, you know, if you are going for a, a job into an aviation industry or especially for a capital future. So I have prepared accordingly and these are very few questions. Okay, and uh, however, definitely the HR will uh, can come up with many other questions. They can ask many things, but uh, some things which uh, they are, you know, some common things which uh, can be asked anywhere, and uh, especially at the capital interview, those questions are put here. Okay, so let's start. The first is uh, introduce yourself. So. Your introduction is uh, something which is always uh, the first thing you will be asked in any interview, any job interview, any industry interview you will go to, right? So here, what are, how are you going to put forward your answer? You're going to start with your uh, name, to uh, tell who are, who are you, uh, where are you from, okay? You do not have to uh, go or talk about your family because the question clearly indicates and asks you introduce yourself. So they are interested in you, not in your family. Okay. So you've said your name, you've said where are you, where are you from. Then you will start with your uh, work qualifications, whatever the work experience you have. And uh, in any case, um, if you have any projects, any internship, how, how many years you have worked in that particular organization, what were you, you know, just one or two lines, you can say that what were your job responsibilities, what were you working there as, okay? And you might also go ahead and, you know, keep on giving, uh, telling you that you how you are as a person like some of the most of the time you can also go ahead and say that i am a hard working empathetic and a team professional um, who loves to work within team however if i get an opportunity if i if, if the work demands that i can also work individually on my own responsibility and come up with the better outcome okay so these are the things which you are going to add in your introduction. Introduction is not uh, the uh, cliche thing which used to happen when you used to go for a uh, job interview and uh, people were interested in your academic or people were interested in your, uh, you know, your core uh, work experience. Yes, the work experience you are going to speak, but then adding to it, you are going to also speak about you yourself. How are you, your skills, your personality, because they are also looking for whether you are going to gel up with that particular job position. Okay, so understood? Yeah, okay. Can I um, just give me your introduction? Just one. No, right now. Uh, 
hi myself uh, yeah uh, hi myself tarun uh, i have completed my uh, uh, ame course uh, in hindustan university uh, and i am a 2019 passed out uh, like okay is that okay okay so you started with hi oh yeah Okay, that is not a professional way to start. Okay. You are going to start either, for example, if you're interviewed somewhere uh, before 12, then definitely you will be greeting uh, as good morning. Or if it is okay. after 12 in the afternoon, in the noon, then obviously good afternoon. If it is in the evening, good evening, like that. Okay? Um, okay. The second thing which I noticed is that you said some you have done your AB. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, AME. What is that? Oh, AME. Act of Management. AM. AM. So, when you are saying, when you are telling uh, the uh, interviewer that this is what you have done, the qualifications and all, all these things, then in that case, uh, you need to give the full uh, form of uh, you know your university or the uh, school or the board or whatever organization you are talking about or anything because okay. the short forms nobody is going to understand. Okay, so it's okay. better. For example, if you are saying just a small example, if you are saying that uh, I have uh, completed my uh, uh, twelfth uh, from. CBSC board. Now, what is CBSC board? Now, everybody do they understand? No, I have completed my 12th or by or from Central Board of Secondary Education. Okay. So this is how they get to know. So you have to come out when you're talking. You have to come up with the full form. You just can't come up with the short forms. That's not professional. Okay. 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 Um. Then you are going to even add your interests. What. Uh, where you know, which uh, what kind of things you are interested on in, like what do you do so this is just a bit of add like how I told you uh, last time or for the resume you're going to do that in the uh, introduction round as well because now the, uh, the perception the way of looking at things even for the HR it is changing now still there are some industry it is uh, still uh, the same however there has uh, been a slight renovation in all of this okay okay why do you want to become a cabinet? If this question is asked to you, what will you answer? Oh, to travel to different locations. Uh, um, salary benefits. <laughs> okay, please do. Anything else? Okay. Um, to, uh, mostly, like, I travel. I like to travel, so... I choose this one. Okay. Okay. See, definitely the travel part is going to be the uh, A factor when we are talking, uh, when, when somebody is asking you why you want to become a cabin crew. Because cabin crew is, uh, you know, the, the number one uh, advantage of a cabin crew is travel. Traveling to see different places, meet different mm -hmm. people and all. So uh, this is one issue, one thing, but then you need to add something like how you are, uh, like how you eat, you don't have your dinner, but then you just uh, to add something to your palate, you are also including dessert so that it feels better after the dinner or something. So exactly the same way when you're giving a straight answer, fine, traveling is better, everybody will accept. However, you're going to add it with, I like to meet people, I like to uh, talk to people. I am a kind of a person who is an extrovert or extrovert personality and I would love to meet people from different cultures and background um, uh, with traveling around. So this is an added thing which we are going to speak on. You just, um, uh, you know, like, like how you serve guests when they come at home. Exactly the mm -hmm. same way I believe that customers are guests for me or the passengers are guests for me. So in that way, I'm going to take care of the guests and that will give me an immense happiness and satisfaction, you know, some, some kind of adding thing, okay? Do not go over the board. Do not just leave it like that. Be in, you know, okay. in life. Average. So why do you want to become a cabin crew? Travel and all this. Yes, uh, the Travel. salary part which you have said, hmm. you can come up with the salary part. Um, however, you know, you just have to put it that way. Uh, in case if you want, depending on what kind of uh, you know thing is, however, 
it's better if you avoid because uh, most of the airlines they don't take it in a positive way. They don't like honesty. You know, uh, so it's better that if you come up like this, that um, um, yes, it's a lucrative job. It's one of the lucrative job in the world, and you get to travel. You earn while you travel. So it's the best thing. Which uh, it's the best job which I see that it is going to fulfill my uh, interest, my dream of uh, you know traveling around the world as well as um, I'm earning as well. That's it. Done. You're just mixing it up, which is okay, right? Okay. What fascinates you about aviation industry? What do you think? Mm. The future seems to be good in aviation industry. Aviation industry? The future seems to be good in aviation industry. I'm and uh, interested in that. Uh, to carry on with my career in aviation industry. Okay, so you said that uh, the future of aviation industry seems good, and that's the reason why you want to make a career in aviation. Mm. Okay. Uh, fine. That is also okay. That is also good. One point is good, obviously. But you need to uh, just because see this this answer of yours actually show uh, gives the HR an impression that because the future of aviation industry is good, that's why you want to join. You do not have any interest. You do not have your passion. You do not have um, a zeal to join or to work with you know in the uh, world of aircraft or. You know, mm. You're not an interpersonal person. This is also one of the things. So, right? uh, like, uh, I'm interested in uh, to work on aircraft, like some something like that. You should know. Yeah. So, okay. um, you have done aircraft uh, engineering, maintenance engineering. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes. So add that also, because okay. uh, you just can't give one word answer. Okay. You just have to express yourself. Whenever the HR is asking questions, you have to express yourself. Okay. So uh, this is how you're going to answer like uh, to aviation industry, the uh, future, as you said. Uh, first of all, you will start with your passion and interest. That I have a great interest into the aviation industry, and and that's the reason why I uh, have uh, done my aircraft maintenance engineering, and I love aircrafts and I would love to work with you know among or around the aircrafts and would love to uh, you know know more about it and I would like to dedicate or give uh, you know contribute my uh, learnings and experience uh, with the aviation industry also that uh, the aviation industry is uh, you know one of the uh, fastest growing industry in the world and uh, this industry is never going to stop. Why? Because people will require, will be required to do, you know travel from one country to another, one continent to another. So this is one industry which is uh, which gives immense uh, and uh, you know like growth, immense growth. And also an added advantage is meeting new people and traveling the uh, the world. So that's it. You have added your interest, you have added your passion, you have added your, uh, you know, um, advantage that what you have and you like it. And also that you have the relevant uh, educational qualification uh, to enter into this industry. Okay. Right? You need to put it in that way. Hmm. Okay? okay. After doing engineering, why do you want to enter aviation industry? Now, I wrote this question because I didn't know that you. Uh, well, you have done aircraft maintenance essentially. However, this question can go to some uh, you know person who has done engineering in other fields, like for example, software engineering or uh, civil engineering or some like you know that kind of engineering. And okay. then they want to enter into the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. So in that case, also you have to connect the engineering. Uh, you know, the, the thing which you have done, the, the course which you have done with the aircraft, somehow you have to connect it. Because the aviation industry is, uh, has a lot of options in each and every field. Uh, like uh, you will see HR, you will see uh, operations, people working with the operations, flight operations, administrations, uh, in flight services, 
uh, people who are working in the ground staff, you know, uh, loading and unloading of the cargo and all that thing. Then with the customer service, reservations, then even the people who are working with the aircrafts, looking, for, you know, uh, the aircrafts that, uh, what is the problem and all that, that's all comes into the aircraft maintenance engine. They try to maintain that. So all these, the, yeah. the different uh, departments uh, or different opportunities which you will get into the aviation industry. So just connect the engineering part with that. But for you, it is very easy because you've already done yeah. AV, so there's nothing to worry about. Okay. What qualities do you possess for cabin? You have come for a cabin crew interview and the HR asks you, what qualities do you have to become a cabin? What do you think? Height, weight, and uh, like that. All, uh, height, weight, and uh, uh, like that you're saying. Huh? Um, so you said height, weight, any other qualities to become a cavalry? Do you have? I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> Okay. See, uh, for cabin, see what is the job of a cabin crew? Obviously, the safety, security, and then the service of the to look after the passenger. Okay. So now the cabin crew has to be, uh, you know, uh, mindful of making decisions. They should not uh, get uh, irritated or, or, you know, take um, okay. um, like they should not be uh, pessimist. They should okay. be optimistic each and every day. Right. Also, uh, they should uh, have a smile on their face all the time. They are uh, humble towards the other people uh, while uh, working, and uh, they should be outspoken, friendly in nature. Right. Uh, so these are some qualities of the cabin. Obviously, the height and weight is the eligibility criteria, which is required. Obviously, yeah. you can add that also afterward. But then these are the things that I'm an empathetic person and I am um, I'm a hardworking and a flexible personality who can who, is, who love to take challenges and uh, can um, uh, simple uh, like uh, one is empathetic, flexible, hardworking and also humble that, to people. Uh, humble or uh, like the okay. kind in nature, okay. uh, love to meet people. That is also one thing because that quality has to be there. Love to meet people, talk people. Okay. And uh, uh, my interest is like traveling around the world also. So that is, these are the qualities which are required. Now, when, and now at the end, in the end, you can add that uh, my height and weight is uh, relevant towards this okay. job. However, if you do to avoid that, that is fine because here they're asking you quality. Qualities. Height and weight are not your quality. Quality is something which comes uh, you know, from, you know, from inside, you know, in your nature, what kind of personality you are. Right? So these are the things you will add. Okay. What are your strengths? People ask this question in almost all of the jobs yeah. when you wherever you go. So, what are your strengths? Even if you are uh, talking about one of your strengths, that is also fine. You can explain it, talk about it a bit. That is also fine. I can say that uh, qualities, uh, the two, two statements in uh, strength are uh, hardworking and uh, flexible. Here. Yeah. Hardworking and flexibility just trend. Yeah. So, okay, fine. You have said that. Now you want to, uh, you have to actually talk a bit about it that how flexible or how hardworking you are. Uh, like a flexible means uh, like uh, I'm flexible to any shift timings. Uh, is that okay? And uh, hardworking means. Uh, Hard, hard working means. <laughs> okay. Hard working means. Uh, 
Okay. When you have talk, when you have said about two of your strengths, you're going to connect it with your work experience. You have to connect it with your, even if you have not worked before, you have also, uh, you know, uh, during your academic uh, uh, tenure when you are studying, these two qualities can also add to it also. You can, you can just have to connect it with your uh, daily routine or something like that. Why? Because then you have to prove that you are hardworking and strength. Uh, I mean, you have that uh, flexibility strength. Why? Because you can say, if you have worked, you can say, I am a flexible uh, person. Uh, this is my strength. Why? Because when I used to work, I am because I was, I used to work uh, in night shifts or um, uh, even in day shifts, whenever it was required, whenever the, my job has the requirement uh, of working um, in any time of the day, I was flexible to it. And I knew how to manage my time. So I used to manage my time accordingly. I am a hardworking person. I'm a hardworking uh, you know, individual. Why? Because uh, I have, uh, I try to finish my uh, work in time and I work hard and I work to, I am very dedicated professional. Simple. When, when you're dedicated, you're hardworking. Simple. You have to finish the work in time. That's it. I know my deadline. I know my limitations and I work hard for it. And uh, whatever the uh, task is given to me, I'm dedicated to it and I work towards it. So you have proved that you are hardworking and you have also proved that you are flexible in your time. Even if you have not worked, you can connect these two things with your um, school days or college days, whatever. Like uh, um, I finished my project, um, whatever, or finished my assignment, which was given to me in time. And I worked hard for it. I, I, work day and night but I finished it because I had to finish it. Also I I took care of my health during that time because they do not want those people you know who are working because that is impossible like human beings working day and night and not resting because then your performance will also decline if you're not resting well right so that also you have to keep in mind when you're explaining that. Now the next question is why do you want to join I put star means some airline, any airline. For example, if I ask you, why do you want to join uh, Vistara? Okay. So in this case, you need to have a proper uh, research of that airline beforehand when you are coming for the interview, right? So if you're gone for an interview, you do a proper research of that organization. You've uh, gone to the Google, you have studied, read about it, you've gone on the official website. That is far much more important. It's better that you, you visit their official website and you go through uh, what they have uh, you know, achieved, how their airline is, what is it all about. You have that about us section, right? So you will have an idea because these questions will definitely be asked in the interview for which airline you are going to. Uh, appear for the So you need to keep this beforehand. You have to be ready for it. That Vistara is one of the fastest growing domestic airlines in India. And I would like, I've seen that it has been uh, throughout the number one airlines, the full service airline, and uh, it gives an equal opportunity to its employers. Um, it has lots of, uh, you know, uh, even uh, domestic, it flies domestic as well as international. So there are different things when you are going to uh, prepare your answer for this. Okay, this is all done before. Now, do your research. Now, what are your interests? Now, this is completely personal. This is completely in you as a person. So definitely, if you are asked these questions, you will have to express your interest as well. So, what are your interests? Uh, watching films. Um... Okay. Mm. That's it. Traveling a lot. Okay. Anything else? Um, and uh, I like to like uh, know more things. Like uh, I like to explore things. Okay. 
So as you said, now I'm taking on you. I'm, I'm actually asking you. You told three of your interests, right? You just said three interests. You okay. like watching movies. You like to explore things, and uh, what is the third Traveling one? Traveling a lot. Traveling. Traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I ask you. Where have you traveled recently, and can you please tell me about the place that you've traveled? How was your experience? Um, uh, recently, I traveled to a hill station. Uh, it uh, the uh, like uh, I like the climate there. Uh, uh, like uh, cause of uh, it was uh, chilly weather there, and uh, I'm. Mm -hmm. Like I like, uh, like I like to be the place uh, in that kind of place mostly, uh, in uh, hill stations like somewhere. It was a good experience there. Uh, like, um, mm -hmm. I can um, I met uh, different types of people there, uh, from uh, different cities of India, and uh, they are all tourists. Um, what was the name of the place where you are visited? Uh, Air card. And where is it? It's uh, um, do you know uh, Uti? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's nearby. Okay. So these are the questions HR will ask you because you have said traveling. HR mm -hmm. can come up with you any question just to check whether you are actually you do have the interest or you just you know, saying it for the sake of sake. Uh, for example, you said you have watched movies. So HR might, might ask you, what was the recent movie you have watched and tell me about it? Did you like the movie? Why did you like the movie and all these things? Then the third one which you said, uh, what was the third of interest of yours? Um, traveling, you said, or watching movies, you said, and what was the third one? Explore, exploring things. Explore. So now when you talk about when you're talking about exploring things, what do you mean? What do you actually mean about exploring and what have you explored? Have you explored things? Have you explored places? Have you explored a person? What have you explored? Uh, like uh, exploring means like uh, I'm I'm interested in uh, 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 knowing things about uh, knowing uh, each and everything about and grabbing things and uh, like I I'm interested to study a lot uh, about uh, most of the things. Okay. Um, yeah. okay. So you just have to uh, uh, be ready with your backup. Why? Because if you're putting those in uh, interest, okay, uh, okay. HR might throw you questions on that. They want to know. Okay. Now, some in some cases, they might ask you, uh, tell me about your family. Okay. So in that case, you can go ahead and you can talk about your family, how many members are there in the family, how many, uh, you know, your brothers, sisters, your parents, and what you, does your father do, what does your brothers and sisters do, yeah, what's your brother. So these are the things they will, but you will never include your family details or family, uh, you're talking about your family in your introduction, because introduction is slowly for yourself, and they're interested in you because they're hiding you, not your family members. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Because why I'm, uh, you know, stressing on this because I've seen that in India, most of the people, whenever they go ahead for the interview, because I've taught students, so I know, and uh, they actually add their family in the introduction, which should not be done. That's a big no. Mm, can you can you repeat? That? I'm saying that when you are told, you know, giving your introduction, then you never include your family in your introduction. But if you are asked separately, like this question, tell me about your family, then you will uh, talk about your family. Okay? okay. Now tell me about your weakness. Any weakness you have? Tell me about your weakness. You don't have any weakness? I don't. 
you thinking okay yeah, fine think. um in case if you are not able to find out see these are the things which you are going to uh, prepare before when when you go for it like the day before okay, okay. uh sometimes when you do not know uh, what is your weakness you need to be uh, uh, you need to yeah uh, like uh, uh, mostly i'll be not there in time <laughs> Uh, like I, I uh, I'll not maintain time. I will not maintain timings. Oh, so you have timing. a problem with time management. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let me tell you one thing. In any job, in any job, uh, whichever job interview you go, they are all looking for people who are an excellent time manager. Yeah. Because when you're doing a job. you must be a, a responsible individual who knows how to manage their time right so this weakness never say in an interview that you have a problem with you being honest you have to work on it but uh, never say this in an interview because this is going to be a very bad impact on your job they will definitely not select you because if they will think that oh this person he don't know how to manage his time he has an issue with time management and why am i going to hire him because we will have a you know hard time uh, you know hiring him and then uh, we can face uh, difficulties afterwards so why don't we look go ahead and look for a candidate who knows how to manage his time right so never tell them this try to talk about the weakness uh which is uh, which is not going to affect that much into the job but also you are telling that you will you are working on it and you have already worked on it and you're getting better at it for example um you can just say that uh, i'm a straight forward person and i talk right on the face of the people i mean whatever the uh, in, you know opinion i have to give i just talk straight uh this is uh, my uh, this my why i'm claiming this is a weakness why because most of the time when i talk straight on the face of the person many people they get offense you know they, they get offense about it however when i got to know that this is the weakness which i have and i should work on it i actually got better and better and i worked on it and i and i just know by now that uh, in uh, if i have to say things uh, honestly to someone then i have to you know tell this thing in a appropriate manner in a proper manner so that it doesn't get offensive and it doesn't feel offensive to the other person so i worked on it and i have uh, got better with that that's it because that is not going to affect the job okay because as you are working now if you are talking about time management now if in case if you have to work in time management then in that case you will talk about that i used to have a time uh, management issue but then i worked and i started working and i got better and better but i'm not sure they will take it in a, in a positive way so it's better you come up with some kind of weakness which doesn't have uh, that much impact on your job got it you can find many such kind of weakness on google when you go about it so you pick up the particular weakness which suits you and with the one which you can explain so always remember weakness which doesn't impact your job second you have worked on it and you are working on it and you are getting better and better and you have also uh, you know got much better right this this actually gives the hr that yes you are accepting that uh you're not perfect because no human being is perfect also you have worked on your weakness and you have learned from it and you're continuously doing it mm-hmm. right do you like to work in team or individually in team individually in team in team okay what if uh, i have given you a task where uh, it is required that you have to do it on your own and no other person is needed where you have to take your own you know yourself responsibility to do that in that case what would you do mm-hmm. 
I'll I'll follow up the instructions given to me accordingly, and uh, I'll work it on it. You follow it accordingly, and you will do it. But right now, you said that you like to work in a team. Are you open to work individually also? Yeah, both. Okay. So you need to you know the answer to this question is that okay, okay. I'm I'm flexible working with team as well as individually. Okay. Now this gives the uh, you know the impression to the HR that uh, this person is not uh, you know uh, intimidated you know intimidated by working with any you know, people. Also, if we have been given. We can also work in vision and come up with results. Now, in that case, if they ask you, um, tell me a time where you have worked in a team, or tell me a time where you have worked in division and have achieved the result. So you have to be ready for that also. So just think of that beforehand before they do that these kind of questions definitely can come your way. Okay. So be ready. You can pick up any any example or any. Uh, work experience from your work or from your, uh, you know, during your academic days. It can be into you know, the project or the assignments, anything. Okay. Thank you. Do you have so one thing, one question I have forgotten to include, but um, I'm asking you now. Do you have leadership skills? And how leadership. do you judge? Yes, leadership skills. Or give me an give me an example uh, where you have worked or as a leader and uh, achieved results, and how have you handled it? Like uh, I can um, uh, like uh, I can assign my uh, like uh, I can uh, assign my team members uh, at a given uh, at a given task uh, to follow the instructions uh, given accordingly and uh, to work on and uh, complete the task. Work on that and to complete the task given. So you can assign your team members. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Work. Uh, and uh, make them to work. Or, uh, like. Uh, make them to work and follow up the instructions uh, accordingly. The, accordingly, the task given to them. Okay. So that means you are trying to uh, manage your team and the task, uh, the work uh, which you have been given. You you are assigning the task. To the respective individuals in your team, and that is our okay. Fine, that is also fine. Um, but um, now they also want to know that what about that? I mean, so, okay, fine. You have assigned your assigned the task to the respective individuals, but after that, did you have any conflict within the team? Are you looking for that also? I mean, are you are you noticing that also? Because whenever a leader is there for a team, they are responsible for each and everything. Whatever happens in the team, right? Mm -hmm. They must be careful of uh, the things that uh, the there should not be any conflict within the uh, team members or among the team members. Okay, and in case if there is any, how do you so resolve that conflict? How do you solve that problem? That all comes in the leadership skills. Now, do you only assign tasks to your team members, or do you also work for it? You are also a part of the team. Yeah, I'll also work for it. I listen yeah, and I'll work. also work with them. Exactly. So you also work. So these are the kind of things that we are looking for. Now the next question is: Did you have any conflict at your work? Any problem? Conflict. Yes. Any uh, argument or any differences uh, with your uh, work no. with your Not colleagues? It. Did no. you have any conflict? No. I have so to say. say <laughs> yes. So you didn't have any conflict at your work. Fine. 
most of them they actually come up honest and they say yes we have conflict but then how do you handle it you have to explain something or and see everybody knows that during their work tenure they will have conflict everyone even uh, when i was working i had some conflict i had some differences the other people who were working they had some everybody will have the question but then how are you answering the questions in the interview that is going to matter because most of the time what happens the hr they do not need an honest person they actually go ahead and they want someone who wants to fabricate or something like but this question i don't know some hr they take it and most of the hr they don't take it okay. so it's better to play safe okay now why do you think you are best suited for the position tell me and the position which i am talking about here is cabin why do you think you are best suited for that that position I don't know how to answer this question. In this case, you will come up with uh, first of all your relevant experience. Okay. okay. I have relevant work experience for the uh, job position. I have the uh, I possess the qualities required to be a cabin crew. i have the uh, you know the interest of travel and the passion you know to work as a cabin crew uh, in order to serve uh, people and meet different people uh, from uh, you know different, from okay. different all these things you you just going to i have a warm personality i have a warm personality i like to uh, talk to people and uh, you know because in cabin crew they actually want that person you know they, they are they are actually looking for that qualities i am a good learner a good listener as well i learn fast i am hard working i'm flexible there are all these things which are going to put in this best suited in the position okay thank you what is your favorite past time watching films watching movies okay why do you like to watch movies uh, like uh, movies uh, like we can uh, learn more things in movies like uh, uh, nowadays most of the movies are all based on uh, the things which are all happening in our uh, societies and in our world everywhere so by watching movies we can uh, gain knowledge and we can know about more things uh, like we can know about different things what are all happening uh, wherever in the world and uh, we can uh, hear, uh, we can hear different kinds of stories um very good hmm. i like the answer very good that's okay what can you contribute to the organization my hard working hard working okay I mean, see, there are many other. See, the nature means there are many other hard workers sitting outside. <laughs> yes. What can you contribute to the organization? In this uh, case, I'll work as a part of a member of this organization to take, ah, uh, like. Uh, Hmm. Um, to build a career uh, in this organization. Ah, oh, sorry, not like that. Um, okay, maybe you say this point. What what you were actually a little bit you were. Yeah, like um, uh, uh, yes. like uh, I work for this organization to to uh to make this organization uh. uh A step further from uh, where? A step further means like. Um, that means you can take this organization to the heights, and you can work for mm. its, uh, uh, you know, for uh, like. Uh, 
you're going to see normally how you're going to answer the question that you have the relevant work experience uh, which uh, you can contribute to the organization the learnings and the knowledge which i have achieved in these years with my work and with my academic knowledge with my uh, skills which i have i can all contribute all these things to the organization and i believe that uh, my relevant expertise would be of mutual um, you know but it will be mutually beneficial and uh, by working uh, and working with dedication and hard work i believe that we both can uh, take this organization to higher levels to where actually where it belongs and i that's it i mean this is what i am going to uh, mm. do for the, for the organization that i have yeah. obviously when you are doing so many things that means you do, you are expected to be loyal for the company okay, okay. so these are the things you are are you willing to relocate yes yes, yes. so in case if you want the job the answer is yes yes right what if you have a child on board and he is crying continuously what will you do in that case in the cam intro must uh, give the baby bassinet to the passenger is it right? <laughs> no this is not a baby this is a child child like child. yes this is a child like very uh, maybe uh, 3 4 years old or 5 years old but this is child like uh, i can give the uh, uh, chocolate to the child and uh, chocolate chocolate and then okay. he, um good good you can give chocolates to the child okay. and also um, you know this was one of the questions which was asked to me uh, during my kathar interview uh, okay. so i remember that and that's why this is why Yes, you can give coffee, and this was also what this was the answer which I used to give, and uh, they liked it fine because see, according to your knowledge, you know that they you can give coffee, chocolates to the child, and they can keep quiet. That's fine. But those who have also worked uh, in the airline and they have experience, uh, they know that there are many other things you can give to the child apart from the coffee or the chocolate. There are uh, the uh, you know the books and there's a children kit, mm, okay. children kit which they have crayons, colors, books, um, drawing books. So just give it to the uh, distribute it to the child. Whoever okay. child is there on board and just give it so that he will be you know busy doing some activity. Mm. You can give it to the mother and son. And the crying they will not cry. They will be okay. Okay. What does customer service do? What do you mean by it? Customer service. Um, a client has to serve the customer with the proper way of what the. I'm oh, sorry, not a client. Like. A, Like a, a a person has to serve his customer uh, in a proper and a good way uh, to fulfill his to to fulfill the customer needs. Okay, so you mean to say that you fulfill the customer expectations? That is the customer service. Hmm. Okay, yeah, in a way it is correct. Yes. Um, like how do uh, whenever you have an issue, you call up to the call center and you speak to the customer service people, yeah. right? then how do they talk you have an issue you have an expectation from them you tell their expectation you tell their tell your issue and then after that uh, they will work towards it and they will solve your issue and or they will fulfill your expectations right exactly that's way that is the way like customer service is something where you uh, take care of the customers and try to fulfill the uh, need uh, the relevant needs of the customer Which is uh, related to maybe any product or any service, it is right. And whenever you are dealing with a customer, you need to be polite, and uh, you have to be uh, uh, patient, uh, patient and polite. So this is also one of the qualities of the cabin crew that you need to be patient because um, uh, whenever you are working uh, with uh, you know with lot of passengers on board the aircraft, 
uh, and while you're serving, you have to be really patient because there will be lots of demanding flights. Mm -hmm. Lots of demanding flights. And you just can't keep on a, oh, like that. You can't just get irritated. You have to be very patient. So this is also one of the quality of being that. Now you remember, so these are the qualities which you can put it. Okay, and for customer service also it's the same. Okay. Like, uh, like how you call Amazon and uh, you're not satisfied with mm, the product yeah. and you complain, you know? Yes, I can that. understand. Talk about an instance where you have been a decision maker. Well, we well we have to take a decision. Uh, while in the time of uh, we are taking a decision, we have to be a patient first. Uh, like we have to be patient and so, we have to think for some time, and we have to take that uh, decision. Okay. So, uh, is was there any situation where you were bound to take a decision, and how did that impact? And how did I make it? How, I mean, what was the impact of that decision? So you have to tell me about the situation where you have to take a decision and what was the impact of that decision? just have to come up with the, any instance where you have worked, you know, from your work, work experience or from your college days or something, where you had to make a decision or even in your daily life. It's not just about your academic or work. You can come up with any, uh, any situation from your daily life where you had to take the decision and then what was the impact of the decision, you can uh, talk about it. But just pick that they just pick uh, that you were not hesitant, uh, like you were not, uh, uh, you were a good decision maker. I mean, just, just come up with an example where you can actually portray that you're a good decision maker. And even if there is a pressure, you know, in, the, in your life or in, in that particular situation, you are not afraid or you're not fearful of taking or making a decision. Because that's what they are, they want to check. Because when you when you will be flying on board the aircraft, emergency can occur anytime. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you are trained to uh, take the decision. So obviously, a cabin crew uh, must take a decision. He do not he or she doesn't have time in emergency to tell the other crew, "Hello, there's a fire. What what am I going to do? This passenger has fallen down. What am I going to do? Come and help me." Now the uh, aircraft is on, you know, is uh, had caught fire. The engine is on. What am I going to do? These are the things which you, you know, the, during the emergency, you do not have time. Okay, so you have to take the decision quickly and right. Hmm. That's what they are looking at, the right and quick decision. And for that, you need to be mindful. This is the quality they are they want to uh, they are looking for. So in that case, you will come up with an example. In from your daily life, uh, related to anything, related to your uh, academic, related to your uh, work or, or your uh, normal daily life, and just put it forward that this was the impact of the decision, and your impact for the duty of the, your decision has to be good. Otherwise, there is no point in picking up that situation and telling you to be interview. Okay. okay. What if there is seat duplication on flight? Did you understand the seat duplication? Seat duplication. Mm -hmm. Okay. One passenger has got a particular seat and that is written on the boarding pass. Now the another passenger comes, he has also got the same seat number on that particular flight. Now these two passengers started to argue. This is my seat. Now the other passenger said, this is my seat. This is my seat. This is my seat. What are you going to do then? How are you going to handle this? In that case, it's a technical question, obviously, uh, which uh, a cabin crew knows, but uh, normally a rough idea of it, you, you can say, but however, you need to handle the situation in this way that you approach the passenger 
you talk to the passenger, sir, may I see your boarding pass? Look at the boarding pass, the seat number is there. Then you approach the other passenger, talk to the other passenger, say, sir, may I see your boarding pass? This number. Okay, now, the, now you see the both the seat numbers are same. Whatever, what are you going to do? You tell both of the passengers, sir, could you please wait for a minute? Let me go and speak to the ground staff because they are the one who is going to resolve this. So you take the boarding pass, you go to the ground staff, you give them. This is a very, uh, obviously they will work for quickly on it. Now these ground staff will do something, they will get in touch with reservations or something like that because they have that walkie talkie thing and they will correct it. They will write the new seat number, they will give it back to me, uh, you know, the particular cabin crew who has taken the boarding pass. The crew will go and to the passenger and she will give the respective boarding pass with their names and tell them, sir, this is your seat, this is your new seat, and sir, this is your seat. Okay. Argument over, complete over. Okay. Okay? Both of them. Sir. How will you handle your teammates' conflict at work? For example, if there is a teammate conflict, you are the supervisor, you are the leader, how will you handle that? I first I say, uh, guys, just be calm and uh, just uh, like uh, um, like uh, I make uh, they can they can talk about the problem what they have been going through and uh, first of all, first you're I going say, to say, be calm. That's right. Be calm. Obviously, you will just tell them. Uh, for example, what if they are uh, having a conflict uh, in, in the cabin in front of the passengers, which is not good. So, you just tell them whatever it is, just be quiet. So, do your work, come finish your work, and come to me. We will have a talk. Call both the people, okay, both okay. the cabin crew, both the teammates, and speak to them after the work. Okay. And, you know, get to know that what was the issue. Now, you have to calm them down and just give them each of them equal uh, you know uh, opportunity to speak Great. after listening after listening to both of them take uh, you know the measures accordingly calm them down and tell them do not fight in front of the passengers because that is not professional it will actually give you know, uh, give a bad image of the airline, mm -hmm. of the company, of the organization, which is not correct. In case, even if you have a differences, any kind of differences among yourselves, solve it, talk after the work, in the galley or somewhere else where the passengers are not uh, watching you. So these are the things how you're going to resolve the conflict, you know, the conflict. And then in case if you would know the exact uh, matter for which, uh, you know, the conflict has occurred, resolve it. You have to write it down in the report also. You do not have to, even if, uh, you, you know, you do not have to inform the cabin crew or depending on the, what the airline rules or regulations, but you need to put a note of that in the uh, report. Because sometimes what happens, the passenger, passengers are looking at you and whatever you're doing in the cabin or in the galley, they are observant of that. Any passenger can go and they will see your name here, the nine batch, and they will complain about you. This is how your airline staff behaves in front of the passenger, and I'm not going to school, fly with them. So you have to be very careful. Okay? Now, describe yourself. This question is all about you as a person. Not about your work, not about your academic qualification, nothing. You as you, you as a person. What kind of person you are? You never know these kind of questions, you know, describe yourself. Normally, HR people ask. Okay. Depending on the industry, obviously, uh, in this cabin pool, uh, the aviation industry, they will ask. Okay, so you need to prepare this beforehand. I'm an empathetic person, I'm a patient, I'm a kind of person who, uh, who do not like to, you know, uh, get into conflict but rather try to resolve blah 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 and all these things you know okay. different things how are, are you open to work or hours yes yes you're open to work. what if your work 
is from 12 in the midnight to 3 in the uh, early morning. Are you willing to work? Yes, yes you have to manage accordingly. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, this is the last thing which I'm going to discuss with you. You need to remember these things whenever you are going for an interview, you're facing in the HR at the interview venue. Okay. We need to obviously have a positive body language. Now, when I talk about positive body language, I do not want to sit like that slouch. You have to keep your spinal cord straight, okay. your back straight when you're talking. Your chin, not like this, your chin down. Right? So, whenever automatically, when you keep your back straight, your chin becomes down, which is at the at a good level. Okay? Smile on your face all the time. Okay, like you need to have a smiling face, but you just cannot be like this, like that, smiling every time. You just can't do that because you're not a robot. Everybody will say, you know, start laughing at you. Smiling face in the sense of warm personality and approach. People can approach. Okay, they shouldn't get intimidated while approaching you because there are many people who seem to be very, uh, you know, uh, intimidating and. Uh, the other person is fearful of approaching that person. So it's better you need to have a more personal. Build that. Confidence. Confidence will never have to lose confidence. Once you lose confidence, the nervousness is straight on your face. It is clearly visible. And if a normal, uh, your fellow interview colleague, you know, interviewee can see you, your nervousness, are you nervous? That HR can scan you like this. So it's better you do not get nervous. Don't badmouth your former employer. Never do that. You worked for a previous company, some other company. Even if you have issues with that company, do not say that. Okay? Because this will come in case, uh, you know, when the HR will ask you about how was your work with the former uh, organization or how did you feel about the former, you know, former organization? In that case, uh, you just have to say something uh, which is uh, good and reflect that you are a person who grabs the opportunity to learn and uh, grow with it. So this is what you're going to do. Learn and grow with it. Okay? This is what you're going to put the impact of the former organization. Unique selling point. Who you are and what you offer. That is very important. Okay. This is how you're going to sell yourself to the HR in layman words. Okay. So you have to come up with some of your unique points to the HR so that HR can pick you, select you. Because there are different other, there are line of people sitting outside who have been selected for this uh, you know, personal introduction now. So in that case, you have to come up with some of your unique selling points where the HR can grab attention on you and they can get, they get attracted and they uh, will select you for that particular job position, right? So this is all on you, how you are prepared. Obviously, you have to be, you know, fully groomed, properly groomed with the confidence showing on your face. I would say not just on your face, but in the entire body, okay? Ask questions in the end. For example, if your interview is over and the uh, HR is asking you, do you have any questions? Normally, HR asks, yeah. do you have any questions? Please ask questions and prepare these questions beforehand before the interview. Why? Because uh, you will know that the HR will ask you questions. So it's better you prepare those questions. For example, like what are the growth prospects in your organization? Um, what is the uh, holiday or the leave? Uh, how how do, do I get the leave or what are the leave rules in your organization? All these things. Because people are, uh, uh, you know, they want to know how the organization works. Are they good? Are they going to be good for the uh, employees? So these are the you know, deciding factor for the uh, potential employee, whether they will join the company or not or something like that. Any other questions you have? No, ma'am. Not it. It's clear. Any, any questions, any interview questions which you have in your mind, 
that uh, you want to ask? Oh, no, ma'am, no, I'm clear with it. Okay. Now, any doubts, uh, please go ahead uh, and ask me about uh, the cabin crew job profession or the opportunities. Uh, like, uh, I have, uh, like, how do I create a resume, ma'am? Cabin crew resume. For the resume, you have to get in touch with the Mandir and she will uh, guide you. Okay. Okay. And okay. Uh, resume, I have already told you that is, yeah, also, yeah. As, as I have already told you that yes, nowadays yes. it is necessary. So you can prepare that. But yeah, I have taken a careful. note of it. Very good. Yeah, okay. But please be very careful. Be well groomed while you are doing it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And even the picture which you will put on your resume or anywhere or you know, putting it in the application or submitting it. That picture also needs to be clean shaped and properly groomed, and mm. uh, the pictures that I've shown you exactly that way. Do not take turns. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay. okay. Um, also, I would like to ask do you have any questions? Please go ahead. Oh, no, ma'am. You can. Yes, you can. I would like to tell you that um, you know, the airlines which we have in India. They are Air India, Vistara, Indigo Airlines, and um, Air Asia. And there are a couple of airlines in the uh, south, South India. So. Okay. Um, Indigo Airlines do not take male cabin. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. But just because you have done AA movie, you will have your opportunity and options open for other job positions. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, that is that goes with every airline. Now, when we are talking about specifically with for the cabin crew, then you can go ahead and apply with Vistara, Air Asia. Uh, there are two airlines, two or three airlines in the south, maybe Star Air and the Turbo Vega Jet Airways. All these uh, airlines are there, and Spice Jet. Yes. Spice Jet is also one of them. You can go ahead with that. Okay. Keep checking their official website for the job openings. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the, go to the career section and you will find all the jobs there. In case, even if you want to just put the CV uh, in their, uh, you know, in their uh, Cart or something like that, you just want to submit the CV. You can go ahead and you can do that also because most of the airline uh, option website give this opportunity to give this option also to go yeah, and yeah. submit this. So that they will have that in their CV and they might contact or they will contact you in case if there is suitable job openings according to your uh, resume. Okay. Your experience. Okay. So, is that fine? May I end the session in any case? If you have any questions, please go ahead. Oh, uh, for AME, uh, like where can I apply and how do I apply for that? Sorry? Anything for AME? Uh, AME? Yeah. Uh, aircraft maintenance engineering. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, I believe uh, you can speak to Mandir. Or you might have spoken to Mandi. Yeah, yeah, she does. She, uh, she can give you. Asking. Yes, but then I can only tell you that uh, for AME, uh, exactly the same way you can uh, you know, follow. You just uh, visit the uh, official website and then the career section. If you see any, you can go ahead and apply or you can submit your CV and they might call you uh, in case of defining suitable positions for that particular job. So you can go to um, do that. Yes. Okay, ma'am, can I uh, add the certificate to with my resume with this cabin crew certificate with my resume? Uh, with certificate, the AME certificate? No, no. This if I if I go to cabin crew interview means, can I add this cabin crew certificate with my resume? If you are applying for a cabin crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. go ahead. No problem. Yes. No, yes. this this online certificate. Can I? Yeah, uh, why not? Yeah, why okay. not? 
can do it. And uh, obviously, uh, this would be an added advantage. Why? Because they would know that you are passionate and you want to fly as a cabin crew. That's the reason why you have went ahead and, and you have uh, you know, done this cabin crew. So they will also know that you are actually prepared. You know, to, for that. So no harm, no issue, nothing like that. You can go ahead and you can mention that in the register also. You can yeah, I mean, okay. attach it. Any other questions? No, no, no. Yeah. no? Sure? Yeah. Okay. Fine. I hope you have when enjoyed will I, uh, When will I get my uh, certificate? I'm all Shortly? Oh. You will get the certificate shortly. And with all your uh, further queries, I, uh, I think uh, Monday would be the right person to get in touch with because uh, I have trained you on the uh, cabin crew thing. Okay. And uh, I hope all the best for you in the future. And I believe that you will.